Down here the beer's a necessity It's Mother Nature's recipe To forget about your worries and your strife Around here the beer's a necessity The only one thing that we need To keep all of us rednecks alive Where will I wander? Where will I roam? I'll always find me A little something cold Whether I'm at a party I'm gonna drink till I run out of booze So go and have a few And the bare necessities of life will come to you I don't know who needs to hear this But I feel like it needs to be said You are finer than a frog hair split four ways so why the hell are you sitting there crying over some piece of shit that wouldn't know their ass from a hole in the ground? I mean, are you really going to sit there and let some shithead that's ugly as a horse's ass and don't have a damn pot to piss in tell you you ain't shit? No, you ain't. What you going to do is you going to get your ass up. You going to go get them in the nuggets. Hell, I'll even let you borrow my nugget buster. But you're going to go get them in the nuggets. And you're going to get on with your life. Because you got shit to do. All right? Now, I ain't going to have this talk again. You got all that? I mean, I really shouldn't have to get on here and remind you that you are hotter than a goat's ass in a pepper patch. So get your daggum shit together. Hey, uh, if you drink the milk with the red top instead of the blue, you country is here. As you can see, the more you fuck around, the more you're going to find out. Can't afford to do this. You know, we can't afford not to, son. Anymore. People will invite white people to the cookout, but do white people ever invite us to the country club? Now I can speak on this. Being from the deep south, I have been invited to some of the the various types of outings that white people have. Now they have bonfires and they have barbecues. And then they have hoedowns. Now, <laughs> hoedowns get lit. Well, I'll tell you what, if that liquor starts flowing too good and you hear a hey, it might be time to get out of Dodge because that hoedown finna turn into a hoot nanny and you don't want to be at a hoot nanny. <laughs> tell me something, girl. Are you happy in this modern world? Or do you need more? Is there something else you're searching for? Eat a two week old unrefrigerated pie. Don't waste your time. I live back in the woods, you see A woman and the kids and the dogs and me I got a shotgun, a rifle and a four-wheel drive And a country boy can survive Country folks can survive 
I can plow a field all day long I can catch catfish from dusk till dawn Make our own whiskey and our own smoke too Ain't too many things these old boys can't do We grow good old tomatoes and homemade wine And country boy can survive Country folks can survive Drop them out, let me see them titties go Lord have mercy, baby's got her blue jeans on Some people ask us, why don't you guys just take over? Why don't you let him rest and sit down? He's worked so hard his whole life. It almost makes me laugh when people respond to him working out there like that. He wouldn't lower himself to quit farming. He wouldn't lower himself to sit down and take a rest. Our job now is to just come along, support him, raise up the next generation of farmers, and just hear what he has to say, watch him, observe listen more than we talk. And in his time, he's going to pass down what he wants to pass down. But until then, no one's making him sit down. No one's making him quit. These, This is his farm. These are his cows. <laughs> Tell me something, girl Are you happy in this modern world? Or do you need more? Is there something else you're searching for? That was sweet, baby. <laughs> Eat a two week old. Um. I'm a refrigerator pie. Dumb waste to fly. What have you got in your hand? Frog! Oh no, really? Mason, that's pretty gross. Where'd you find him? In the dirt! I did for him, I saw him, and I picked up with a, with the shovel, and I killed him. You killed him? With a shovel? No, you didn't kill him. He's not dead. Well, I wanted to cut him and eat the meat out of him. No, you did not. I wanted to. What have you got? Man said, Son, now can you sing a little bit? You ever heard a farm kid talk about his chores? When I was a kid, if I said I did my chores, that meant I rolled, rolled the garbage cans down the driveway <laughs> on Tuesday, and my brother did it on Thursday. And if, if, if I didn't do my chores, I got grounded. If a farm kid doesn't do his chores, the bank forecloses on the family's farm. <laughs> The stakes are high over there, man. Ooh, that's storm weather right there.
This is an old cow that died out here in my pasture. And um, you might have seen this on Facebook or whatever, but I want to explain it and put it here on TikTok. Um, when a cow's born, she's got a, all baby teeth. And then when she's two years old, she'll have these two, uh, two teeth come up here. It'll just be those two solid teeth right there. And then when she's three years old, be right there, four years old. And then five years old, this tooth here on and this tooth here's already gone out, but they'll only be halfway up. And then at six years old, they're all the way up and she's a full mouth cow. And then all of a sudden she'll start chewing them off and everything and they'll get down lower and lower and lower. And this is what you call a short and solid wood. I'd call this a broke mouth cow here. She's completely broke, got that and gone and see how weight the roots are showing here. So this is a broke mouth cow. But what happens is this right here. She only uses these teeth right here just to get out there and graze and pick it up and go on and pick up and go on. And but then what happens is when you see that old cow laying out underneath the tree uh, chewing her cud, well, she's chewing right, using these teeth here and these teeth right here, and she's chewing on the cud. And what happens is you go to church on Sunday mornings and you just kind of spend your time in church on Sunday mornings, get you a little warm, fuzzy feeling, everything's fine, and then it's gone. And, and that's what those teeth are used for. They just grab it and go on. But when you take it home, when you take that word of God home and you start using these back teeth and you study, you meditate, you sit down, you spend time in prayer, you start chewing on your cud back here. And that's when the, that's what these teeth are used for. Now, if the cow's stomach's not working good, she'll chew that uh, grass up and it'll squirt out the back end. She won't get no nutrition for it or anything. But what happens is she'll start regurgitating this food back up and chewing on the cud. Then it goes back into a different compartment. She'll get all of her nutrition that she needs, and, and then she'll be a prosperous type cow. What we've got to do in the Word of God, we've got to become a prosperous people by getting the Word of God with these front teeth, but then spending time chewing our cud with these back teeth and becoming the great, powerful, awesome man and woman of God that God's got for you. God's got a plan for you, and it's a great plan, ladies and gentlemen. You just stick to God, and you just ask him how, what you're to do. And seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Guys, spend time chewing your cud on the word of God and watch great things happen in your life. Bubba Rutherford, Rutherford Land and Cattle, buying and selling cattle six days a week. Always close on Sunday. Y'all have a good day. up everybody I've been seeing a lot of videos and stuff on how you catch your chickens and how you catch your quail and stuff and you got them in an aviary or whatever or aviary however you want to say it well I'm gonna show you a little trick really not so much for quail but chickens mostly now I recommend you get a pretty stout wire this is not really strong enough to catch a chicken that's all right so this is what you're going to do. You're going to take a piece of wire and you're going to take and you'll bend it over, twist it upon itself like this. And you're going to make yourself a little handle. All right. Don't get me for craftsmanship or I've only got three minutes. So anyways, make yourself a little handle like that. Okay. So I mean, put your hand in. Like I said, you want to do this with a nice stiff wire? I don't know. I, I'm not even sure what the gauge wire would be. 
anyways you take your finger you wrap it around just like this like that you bend it in just a little bit pull your finger out you're gonna make it just a little bit smaller than that because you got to have to catch a chicken leg and here's the principle of it you leave it just like that so that when you take and you make it about three maybe four foot long and you'll take and that'll sit kind of flat like that and as you're walking through the chicken coop so you don't have to take and freak them all out and scare the crap out of them you take your wire and the end of it is going to be about just like this kind of bent just a little bit you're going to reach down and they're going to snag their foot you leave it out like that so you can reach in there and grab it and your foot slides into that. You're going to do it right above their foot, their, their little toes. So that when you put it in there, their toes are out here and their legs up here. You just reach gently, grab them, pull them up to you, grab their feet, and you're good. Now I don't know about you guys. That saved me a lot of pain, saved me a lot of time, and it saved me from getting a lot of chicken shit on my, my pant legs from trying to catch them damn chickens. But, excuse the language, hopefully it helps out. You guys have a great day. So, uh, what is it about horses you like so much? I can't tell you what it really is, I can only tell you what it feels like. Hey there folks, I think something's wrong. For miles and miles, these cows are lined up, single file and not moving. They are not moving all. If you look out in the distance, they're all lined up single file and not moving. What is going on? Is it disrespectful if I call you my old lady? All right, brother. Let me see if I can help you out with this one. Ladies, I need you to listen to me, okay? If you got a man that calls you his old lady, and he truly understands what that term means, uh, he didn't learn it by watching too many episodes of Sons of Anarchy. Um, he thinks it makes him sound like a badass. He truly understands what the term my old lady means. You're his ride or die. Your life has more value than his life has. He will die for you and he will kill for you. People, if you ever run across a man that calls his wife his old lady and he knows what that term means, she's not the one you want to fuck around and find out with. You will cease to exist quick, fast, and in a hurry. You will be standing before your maker before you know it. There is nothing between heaven and hell that could stop him from getting to her in a time of need to provide for her and love her the way she deserves to be loved. Ladies, it's a compliment. A big one. There's a big holler tree down the road. If I made a wagon lay down a dollar or two. You go round the bend and when you come back again, there's a jug for the good old Mountain Dew. Oh, they call it that old Mountain Dew. And then that refuse it or fuse. Do I know what product I'm selling? No. Do I know what I'm doing today? No. But I'm here and I'm going to give it my best shot.
I'm just going to set these fishing lures right here because I sure wouldn't want a cute country boy that likes to fish to follow me home. So, I made a video the other day about being poor, okay? Which, you know, is fine. <laughs> We're all just out here living our lives and in the lower tax bracket. <coughs> That's okay. Ain't worried about that. But I did get quite a few comments about my nails, my lashes, and my Jeep. So I'm going to talk about those three things. First of all, easiest thing to talk about is my lashes, okay? They are a filter. I will not pay $200 for somebody to put eyelashes on my eyeballs. Uh, that's just going to be a no-go for me, dog. You know, I don't even wear makeup like probably five days out of the week. Sometimes when I walk into work, there's a lady that I sit next to at work and she goes, oh, Brittany. And that's her reaction to my face because it looks like this. Uh, okay, let me put my, let me put my fake eyelashes back on. Okay. Second of all, my nails. Okay, these suckers. Okay, first of all, look at them. Look at them. Look at them. You'll appreciate it more in a minute. Okay, except for that crooked motherfucker. It's because I do them myself. I do them myself. Last year, I spent maybe like $100 on a gel nail kit <coughs> on Amazon. And I do my nails. I do my nails once a week. Sometimes twice a week. Sometimes I don't do them at all. But I do them myself. And I save hella money. I save a hell of money. I do tips sometimes. I don't do tips. I do different colors. I do little designs. I suck at it. That's why they're fugly. But that's okay. That is okay. Um, third thing is my Jeep. I ain't gonna lie. That bitch is expensive. She's expensive. But you know what? That's why God created monthly payments. He created that shit. So that way we could have shit that we couldn't afford. Because <coughs> I guarantee you, most people cannot go out and buy a vehicle and pay like full, like full price. Now, I mean, I know some people can, but me is not those people's. Me is different people's. I pay a payment once a month and I'll probably be paying it for the rest of my life. Let me just tell you though, Jeep stands for just empty every pocket. Cause that bitch be dinging and flashing like a Christmas tree every time I get in on top of those monthly payments that I'm going to be paying for the next 32 years. So, yeah. Showing up after telling his family he wasn't coming home anymore. Through the pain 
Oh, 